master chef. The search for America's greatest home cook began months ago. Last week, only five remained, and it was a fight to the finish to There's recreate two one of Grant's left. signature dishes. The dream is nearly a reality. But the reality for single mom Monty meant the end of her master chef dream. Monty, your time is done. Because of the three of you, I have discovered my self-confidence again. And there's no way I could ever bake you enough. You're gorgeous. You're talented. Follow that dream. Tonight, the home cooks come face to face with three of the world's most notorious chefs. Wow, wow. My heart is beating out of my chest right now. It's the ultimate battle as the top four compete for a spot in the semifinal. I feel like I'm about to pass out. I mean, I never felt this way before in my life. It was just like an incomplete dish. Yeah, I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're not spoilers. They're teasers, okay? Sorry, I was sending a text message to Austin. I have a good reason. I was, I was texting Austin. Okay, I apologize. I understand you have a family, but we need to finish this. No, I know. Stairs. I think being in top four means a lot to me because... Hey, Frank's got this Salvatore Ferragamo, but it's time for a real fit check. What the fuck is Graham wearing? My man decided... Okay, my man decided I'm the king of patterns. Everybody knows I'm the king of patterns. Okay, I'm going to wear this fucking purple ass striped shirt. Okay, insanely patterned bow tie. Okay, not tying it up all the way, by the way. Do not, do not misunderstand what is going on right now. My name is Graham and I understood the assignment, folks. But then also, on top of that, he decided to wear yet another vest. This is a tuxedo vest looking vest. It's like very... Very bright, okay? Shit is shiny, you know what I mean? If there's a fucking light beaming at it directly, you could go blind, literally, okay? And he decided that that's, that's, a, that's a fit. I'm going to do that. Yes, he is still rocking the lesbian uh, at the wedding fit, straight up. This is perhaps one of the, one of the most uh, uh, giving, uh, giving lesbian at the wedding uh, ones that he's ever worn, okay? Um... That vest is just abysmal. I don't know why he just doesn't straight up go with the shirt. You know what I mean? I think Graham is the sexiest when he's rocking the bowling shirts, okay? When he's got the bowling shirt on, if he never wore an undershirt, my man is a 10-10, okay? But when he does this shit, he's like a 9.5, all right? I'm just going to be honest. 9.5, you know the white uh, t-shirt is the undershirt is still there you can't see it but you can feel it okay the energy of the white undershirt is ever present and uh you know he, he decided to say fuck it we're going all black we're going with the darkest black jeans you could wear with this outfit nothing goes with one another like absolutely nothing but it doesn't matter I had a lot of issues at the beginning in believing in myself but i think if i keep focused and stay positive i think i do have what it takes to win Welcome. We did get the Monty D floor. To the right. I'm honored to be here in the top four to even have this opportunity. I'm here to stay and I'm, I'm going to win this thing. Great to see you. Frank, Becky, Christine, and Josh. Tonight, you'll face your toughest challenge yet. Bro, you say that every week, dog. I mean, I guess technically it is getting tougher and tougher, right? But like, tonight, you will face your toughest challenge yet. <laughs> and it's all taking place right here. Your guest tonight will be just six individuals. Three of them are standing directly in front of you. The other three have logged many, many miles and hours to get here. They're actually touching down in Los Angeles as we speak. Our first VIP judge is just Guy Savoir. Okay, bro, this is literally Squid Games. I mean, I'm sorry, bat chest me all you want, but poggers, Squid Games, just like Squid Game. Who owns six restaurants around the world, including his restaurant Guy Savoir in Paris. 
His restaurant in Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, has been recognized as one of the top restaurants in the United States for the last five years running. And he was my culinary mentor. He said, wow, this guy's legit. I mean, he has restaurants all over the world. He was even Gordon's mentor, and it really means a lot to me because I feel like Gordon is my mentor. Our huh. next VIP guest chef judge is Chef Danielle Ballou, owner of seven of the most acclaimed restaurants in New York City. He's an author of six best-selling cookbooks and is basically the Sinatra of the kitchen in New York City. Okay, I feel like these are legit. You know what I mean? These are like actual legit fucking uh chef meisters you know i feel like last time they had like other master chef uh people from around the world and they were like all right but these guys are like french french i think chef daniel Vulac. wow you know he's even scarier than gordon chef alan ducasse's restaurants in paris london and monaco have each been awarded three michelin stars he is one of only two chefs in the entire world that has more stars than gordon 21 Michelin stars. Okay, bro. At that point, I feel like they're just Paris gifting them. Just to eat our food tonight. I never in a million years thought that I would be cooking for French chefs. Anyone in the world would be honored and terrified, myself included, to cook for these three guest judges. Yeah, but did Obama taste their food? I think not. But since you're the final four, we felt you were ready for this challenge. You'll be split into teams of two, and each team will create a stunning three-course dinner. Christine, the cook with the best dish in the previous elimination challenge, comes with a big advantage you get to pick your teammates. Do you three come stand over here? Here's your yours. Christine. Yes. If you lose this challenge, you will have to cook against your teammate, the person you pick, in a head-to-head -head pressure test. Now is the time to pick who that person will be on your team. I want to go into this challenge not with the attitude of possibly losing, but just to win. So my pick is... Becky. Becky. Becky, thank you, thank you. Wow. The girls versus the boys. I don't want to be in the same team as Frank because Frank could have saved me in the last pressure test, but he obviously chose to save himself. I just was pissed after that. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Your time starts now. In this challenge, our four remaining cooks must conceptualize, prepare, and serve a three-course meal for their toughest critics yet. I see. I'm going to grab some fruit. Okay. In just 90 minutes, the teams will serve their appetizers. 30 minutes later, they must plate their entrees. What do you need? The lamb. Followed by a final 30 minutes to serve their delicious desserts. It's all down to Christine, and she picked Becky. But it's kind of the dream team, right? Because Christine has the palate and Becky can play with finesse. So if you yeah. put those two together, yeah. maybe it's a winning formula. Okay, so should we go like an Asian route maybe? Okay, okay out, of the, out of the four that are remaining, the weakest one, I hate to admit, is Josh, okay? Unless he's just like pulls some crazy shit out here, like he's the weakest one. Frank, I would say, is like up there with Christine and then Becky. Like, I think Christine and Frank are, like, the top two. I don't know which one's better. It might be Frank. It might probably is Christine, but. Into the broth. I like that. No, I don't have a really interesting dynamic as well. Frank said he would save Josh, then had a chance to save himself and did. I think you can see some animosity creep in. Mm -hmm. Because if I was Josh right now, I'd be pretty defensive yeah. against someone like Frank. Deep down, that's the stuff that you don't forget. Okay, here it is. Josh, those carrots look like not being peeled, bro. Say what? They look like in there. They really do. You can't really peel these, though. You okay. can't. All right. Get the out of here. Right, ladies. Uh, give me a little. Bro, I would, I would kind of worry yelling at a dude like Josh. He's a fucking big dude, bro. Like, he just straight up. Frank is so Italian. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, I, listen, I don't see height. All right. You know what I mean? Look, my entire, uh, my people are like, what, fucking 5'7 average height? 
I'm gonna tell you something, all right? Like, <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, he's gonna slam dunk me into the trash is what I would be thinking in that situation. Time to the menu. Talk me so through. we're basically doing an Asian themed menu. We're starting with a Thai broth that we're gonna pour into a dish. We're actually gonna serve it table side and it's gonna cook the halibut and the prawn. A what little bit of muscle and clam. It's gonna be a showstopper, we're hoping. Entree? We're doing duck, mm -hmm. where it's going to be pan fried so we get a nice crispy skin. So and very Asian dominated, I mean. Very Asian dominated. We want that theme to call through in the whole menu. And that's going through dessert as well? We're doing kind of like a, a coconut with other tropical fruit with a coconut chocolate sure. mousse on top right. and then serve it with like a twill with nut okay. coconut. Do not let me down. Work together. Josh, Frank, how are you doing? Doing great, Chef. Josh, give me the side for the appetizer. Wet right. fruit we're time, boys. Spring vegetable terrain. Spring. Wet fruit equals win, so. Vegetable terrain. How do you set that in just under an hour. Um, we're going to use the gelatin base to, to set it, and then we're going to set it in the freezer. That cannot taste the gelatin, you know that? Yes. You're setting that now? Yep. Entree. Talk to me, Josh. We're going to do a lamb saddle. We're going to wrap that in prosciutto, we're going to season it. Where are you on the menu, Josh? I'm in the, I'm in the dessert. I'm going to make a white chocolate mousse. Christine, how are you feeling, babe? Good. You? Right, cool. I love how come they didn't tell Becky that uh, where she was in the fucking challenge when they went Asian dominated. Is it perhaps because they respect Christine's palate more than Frank's? That's kind of fucked up. Or is it because they don't trust Becky's palate as much as Josh's? I'm just saying this is anti-Italian racism. Not even once. I clocked it. I clocked it. I love what the red team are doing with their halibut. They're slicing it so thin that when they pour that fragrant mm -hmm. stock on there, it's going to cook it hugely. Yeah. So the fish is smart. going raw. Smart. Very smart. That terrine on the blue team. It looks insipid. I'm oh, nervous. I'm so worried about that appetizer. Yeah. It's just going to taste the gelatin. Right. He's got no other flavors there. It's just oh. a seasoned water with the, uh, the... What the fuck? Okay, they deserve to lose. Straight up. That is fucking nasty, bro. What is that? What the fuck is that? I've never even seen that, dude. Imagine you're like, you have combined like 30 Michelin stars. And these amateur chef Andy's serve you wet. The only thing worse than wet fruit, which is, you know, fucking wet salad. Okay. Wet veggies. At least with wet fruit, it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, fruit is like, fruit can be, you know, fruit can slap on its own. Ugh. The powdered gelatin. Not a smart move. 20 minutes to go before those doors open to three legends. What do you guys got going on here? Prosciutto wrap, lamb saddle. Prosciutto wrap, lamb saddle. You guys might be stepping out of your comfort zone here. Might as well do that than try to be safe here and make you guys, you know, spaghetti and meatballs. Asian, huh? Yeah, we're going Asian. And we're doing like a picking duck where it's going to be pan fried so we get a nice crispy skin. I'm also making a hoisin sauce, which is going to be very strong. Keep it to yourself, roasted daikon yeah. puree, which we thought would be a little different. Chinese broccoli, some mushrooms, and the rice cakes. Speed up, guys. Just over five minutes from now, the VIP guests will be arriving. Entrees. So Red Team are cooking the duck. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a, almost like a crispy hoisin duck. Right. Um, versus the roast saddle of lamb. Right, yeah, if the blue team can pull that off, I think that that's, that's going to be the shining dish of the whole day. The dessert. Blue team doing a white chocolate mousse with a poached rhubarb. I mean, it's very, very yeah. fussy. Yeah. The thing about the red team is they've kind of gone through this Asian Something. journey. Yeah, yeah. just exotic fruits and, and guava and things guava. like that on dessert. So it's very cohesive menu. Knowing who are yes, the girls team is, uh, doesn't feel better. The girls team is better. And not because, like, boys, ew, icky. Uh, girls, that's great. They smell nice. But also because they're just, uh, the, they work better together. And also they're, uh, overall, they have more skill because Josh is not very skilled and Frank and Josh are not working well together. Star, the sensibility of the blue team menu definitely gives them an advantage to something very sophisticated. Providing, put it off. But I mean, providing, they're taking bigger risks. Yeah. Come on, finishing touches, starts thinking. How are you going to present that beautifully? Okay, Becky, Christine, Josh, and Frank. Your special VVIP guest judges have arrived. VVIP. Wow. Wow, wow. Bro, 
I know, I know the fucking jellied veggies aren't good because not a single person in the chat was like, dude, fuck you for saying jellied veggies aren't good. And there's at least always like one or two people. Whenever I say something, chat has to be contrarian. And I didn't see a single fucking chatter be like, yeah, I'm going to own that one. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to be the jellied veggie guy in the chat. Your special VVIP guest judges have arrived. Oh my God. Gentlemen, it's our honor and our pleasure to have Guy Savoy, Daniel Brelon, Alan Ducat. Chefs in the world here tonight in the Master Chef kitchen. I mean, there's cooks out there that would cut their leg off to cook for one of these guys, and I'm cooking for all three. Man, it's amazing. See you, Golden. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, chef. All right, guys, back to work. Let's go. Unbelievable. Gentlemen, please, asseyez-vous. Please, take your seats. And the appetizer will be served shortly. Thank you. If it wasn't for these motherfuckers, Gordo would literally not have a palate. They have to mass produce and put up six plates like in a restaurant. Six apps, six entrees, six desserts. Yep. Don't they play français? Oui. We salted all of them. Ten didn't Gordo get... Didn't... Ten... No, Bro, Gordo didn't learn fucking cooking in, in England, obviously, or Scotland. Obviously, of course he speaks French. He learned it in fucking France. He learned how to cook in France. No shot, would he? Where's he going to learn how to cook? In England, dude? You would never know about Gordo if, if he just stayed in, in the UK, okay? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three... He'd be Jim, a fucking jellied oi bruv, jellied eel oi bruv chef. Please pick up the appetizers for the red team and the blue team, please. And the tea kettle on their right, okay? Because they're pouring from the right. Let's go, guys. Good one, Bat Emmanuel. Wonder who, who wrote that in the chat. Right, from the red team, we got a asian inspired broth with seafood and the broth is made out of uh, lemon bro grass, come ginger, on and basil, come and the on dude the they prawns. fucking pop off are you kidding me there's like a there's like an element of mm -hmm. there's an experience not, there uh, concentrated flavors oh to no just have the hot bouillon to barely cook the shellfish mm -hmm. that was beautiful i like the delicate dish like that and the blue team You've got a spring vegetable mosaic with a mousse of spot prawn with a fresh uh, new season pea puree. That is so disgusting, bro. But like these guys are fucking French chefs. I bet they eat like weird, disgusting shit on a daily basis. Me is too small. Too small. I think carrots and asparagus is a little bit limited in flavor, but overall I think the texture of the vegetable are good. I think there is too much jelly. Yes. Vegetables are nice, too much sauce in the, in the salad. And they feel uh, heavy. Uh, hands down, it's the red team. A little bit more finesse, a little bit more uh, understanding. Weak broth, but there's way too much gelatine here. Yeah. I'm going to go get the entrees. Bro, it literally feels like a flex. Like, they just have... It feels like Frank threw. It, it, it feels like he was just like, I have three of the greatest chefs uh, in the world right now. I'm just going to serve them the weirdest thing I can. He said, fuck it, you know? I gotta stop playing. Fucking ve vegetable goo? To push like, all of what our the entrees fuck? Out. So I'm slicing the duck. Chunk, 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 chunk. I'm like, there's one. Chunk, 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 chunk. There's one. But well, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter. It up. has to be a 1 1. So you know they fucked up the duck somehow. You know what I mean? They're gonna be like, wait, wait, is this duck, uh, you know, it's like uh, not well cooked enough. Out of my chest right now. Where's the yogurt? Um. So the last few moments, I forget the yogurt sauce. So I had to whip up some yogurt sauce really, really, really quick. Christine, I'm gonna need you to bring that rice over as soon as it's done, okay? Rice is coming in like 10 seconds. Just get some herbs in there real quick. Okay, 15 seconds left, guys. Finish these plates properly. Let's do it right, come on. Get a uh, little spoon, just do a little dollop on the side. So we're forgetting the orange oil? I can't even have the rice on the plate right now, okay? That's what's going on. Uh -oh. 10, nine, eight, Sprinkling. seven, six, five, four, three, Two, okay, to be fair, they did one, pop off on this one. Stop. Time's called on the entrees, and unfortunately, I did not get the rice cakes on all of the plates, and that could definitely be like oh. the nail in our coffin. It's done. Right, let's move on. Let's just move on, okay? All right, let's focus on dessert. Oh, it's a wrap. Oh, it's GG's. Nice. 
Yes. Oh, good job, Becky. Good job. Yeah, way to fuck this one up too. Just like you fucked up Felix. Thank you. The classic one one, so, boys. Wouldn't have it any other team, way. We have duck with crispy bamboo <coughs> rice, Chinese broccoli, and pickled daikon. The, the, the skin of the duck is uh, not enough crispy. And the rice is I too you. sweet. I'm noticing that Gordon and Ram have a rice cake. I don't. You don't have a rice cake. Maybe they run short or it fell down on the floor. The duck, the cook is nice, but the rice cake was under seasoned for me. I like the idea, though. From the blue team. Wait, wait, Sacre Blau. Stuffed lamb saddle with couscous and roasted baby vegetables. Oh my God, they fucking popped off though. To be fair, it's a 1-1, one, one, but it's well-deserved. They fucking popped off on that, dude. Are you I kidding me? the lamb because it's perfect seasoning. It's a very interesting uh, combination. Good look, uh, good taste. Amazing, even that little punch of yogurt was superb, good seasoning. The contrast with uh, dry fruit inside is nice. I like that. Very tasty. The Bro, lamb and yogurt go together better than fucking top of the hour and 60 second ad breaks. It's just like an excellent combination, okay? You put lamb and yogurt, I'm set. And these, these francophones know as well, uh, the lamb and the yogurt is an excellent combination. Just like uh, uh, being able to avoid the ads at the top of the hour. That is right. All you need to do is uh, get gifted a sub from like the Swagger Dagger. Or maybe someone else. But uh, if you are not lucky, then you make your own luck by saying, Wait, wait. I will subscribe for $5. Oh, for free with a Twitch Prime. Oh, hum, hum. Twitch Prime is pre free. <laughs> Here's a one minute I break now. New year, new accent unlocked. Let's go. This year, I will be extra racist towards the French. 2021 was the year that the French got away with it. No more! Oops, it's perfect. Yeah, hands down. At the blue team, definitely. I'm gonna go check on desserts. It can all come down to this. You gotta make them bigger than that. You wanna do one? Yeah. All right. So Frank starts taking over the plating of the white chocolate mousse, and there's no continuity on the desserts. He's just dropping drops on the plate. I'm thinking we're gonna be screwed. One minute left. Make sure everything that's on that plate is perfect. Yeah, watch out. It's extremely important that every plate is the exact same and has all of the components. Definitely on it. XO, X 24. Thank you for the five gifted Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Give me two seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Oh, I think Christine, uh, Christine's team won. Christine and Becky won. Wait, 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 what are you doing? I need those. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, watch out. Five, four, three, No continuity. Two, one. That's the GG. Time is up. Magic out. They give it the five gifted. When they call time on the desserts, I know we screwed this one up. What the fuck? Look like six different people played at those plates. <laughs> Bro, it looks like they just said fuck it and just threw dots on it. You know what I mean? At the end. On the red team. What a joke, uh, Mike. Thank you for the fog. Get this up. With coconut cake, the tropical fruits, and then a coconut creme chantilly in the twill. I can see everything the guava, mm -hmm. the passion fruit, the mango. Eating everything together uh, actually works. I quite like the sort of different textures of the acidity with the dessert. That they worked hard at that. The blue team, the rhubarb has been poached with verju, and then the strawberries were roasted and pure. Dude, this is the worst take I read in chat today. I don't get why they use white chocolate. That's easily the worst kind of chocolate. Straight up delusional, okay? Delusion. All right? Save that kind of fucking attitude. Leave that kind of attitude behind in 2021, motherfucker. White chocolate is goaded, okay? How dare you? Mm, I love white chocolate. Pops the fuck off. And then there's basil and aged balsamic. But yours is better than mine. Yeah, mine mm -hmm. looks different to Agreed. anybody else. And you have extra dots on yours than I don't. Uh, actually, fuck it, we're Constance pulling it on the side. White chocolate versus black chocolate. Or the basil component. <laughs> they forget. <laughs> Again. Yeah, that's a big flaw there. I don't like uh, the chocolate mousse, the presentation of chocolate mousse. Yeah. Really? No, but I don't like. 
I found every bite to be pleasant. <laughs> While maybe it didn't look pretty, it tasted good. If you can manage there you to go on the side, together, you can on vote on the bite, poll. On your palate, it's kind of explosive. I think that the uh, strawberry powder. Oh, actually, you know brilliant. what? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's kind of salty. I, I need to end the poll. Tart. I can't. And all together, it really kind of pushes the limits. I want to do limits. white chocolate versus milk versus dark. Now that each team's three courses have been tasted, the judges have the chance to ask both teams some questions before deciding on the winners. I think I might choose Gentlemen. milk chocolate there, though. May I introduce you to Becky and Christine? Ladies, well done. You can relax. Thank you. They don't bite. Alan, any questions yes. um, for the ladies on the appetizer? We've got a Asian-inspired um, broth with seafood. Why you forget seasoning in a soup? I felt like maybe the seasoning was pretty much almost there. For, for me, it's too light, the seasoning, uh, to finish. To the credit of the seafood, mm -hmm. uh, it helped the seafood being very pristine in its taste. Mm -hmm. Mine was perfect. The blue team's appetizer, which was the mosaic of spring vegetables. Uh, Guy. I think there is no balance between the jelly and the vegetables. It almost seemed like these beautiful pieces of vegetable that were like trapped in this weird jelly concoction. Okay. Yeah, that was nasty, bro. Entrees. Every dish looked different. Who plated those dishes? I did, chef. Danielle did not have any the, rice on the table. Danielle no rice. didn't get a rice cake? Forgetting the rice on, on one of the plates is kind of... Obviously, I was trying to get them all on the plate, and then the time, I mean... So there's an extra rice cake sitting back there? Yes. And it just didn't make it on the plate? Yes. Wow. Wow. Guess you know who else might not make it on the plate? You, Becky, is what Joe would want to say if he was alone right now. I like so long. Beautiful dish for me. The cook couldn't have been better. It literally looked like it came out of a restaurant. And the punch was in the yogurt uh, meat. Who made that yogurt? I did. Uh, Bravo, it was very good. <laughs> the feedback to the red team for the dessert. I thought the twill was one of the most interesting things we ate today, period. One simple retro. Uh, glass with something quite magical inside. Loved it. Thank you. Yeah, Blue we know who won. Desserts. I don't understand the presentation. One strawberry in uh, two pieces and uh, two small pieces of uh, rhubarb. Chef Ducasse didn't rhubarb. Eat balsamic or the basil component. I sat here and looked at both dishes and cringed. You know, there was no rhyme rhubarb. or reason, and you know, I'm really disappointed in the way that dessert came out. You know, the idea was good, but it was just like an incomplete dish. Obviously, it expressed some sort of disharmony between the people creating it. It was just like an argument on a plate. OK. I agree. Back to your stations, please. Were you uh, surprised that Christine was blind when the door yeah. opened? Yeah, yeah. But you know, we always say in the kitchen to a cook, we say you have to practice until you can close your eyes and do it without seeing it. Um, Alan, red team or blue team? Dude, this is not even a the thing. It's like fucking red team absolutely won. Decided. Red team won fucking harder than, uh, you know, black chocolate won over white chocolate. I, I mean, even I prefer milk chocolate to white chocolate, by the way. I shouldn't have said liking white chocolate is such a fatty take. Shut the fuck up. I am a fatty. And also white chocolate is delicious. And I hate when people say, uh, actually, it's not real chocolate. It's like, who cares? It tastes delicious by our six distinguished judges. Let's go and deliver the news. Excellent. Chef Boulou, would you be so kind to deliver the results, please? We were very impressed that you, home cook, could create such sophisticated dishes. Congratulations to both teams. Thank you. Thank you. We have decided that the best meal was cooked by... The red team. Of course, bro. Come on. Oh my 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We made it. We won. We Bro, did. I'm telling you, straight the fuck up, okay? Straight the fuck up. Dark chocolate is something you eat if you personally appreciate pain, suffering, and things that are not good. Okay, milk chocolate, I prefer to white chocolate, but I love white chocolate. It's like, we get it, bro. You know who likes, or liked, because she passed away, dark chocolate? You know what I think of when I think of people who are like, oh, I love dark chocolate? My grandma, okay? That's who I think of. The boys, yet again, and sealed our spots in being top three. Guy, Danielle, Alan, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor. And thank you so much for making the effort to travel halfway around the world to be here to judge this very, very special. Yeah, bro, they literally travel on a fucking private jet half, halfway around the world to go eat gelatin, dude. Of course you deserve to lose, bro. What the fuck was that? That was terrible. They literally served them jellied eels. Like, I, I bet Gordon liked that because he was like, oh, this reminds me. Fuck, that's delicious. Reminds me of fucking home. Yes, jellied veggies absolutely gorgeous mm. so right. good spectacular thank you so much thank you so much, you so much. Merci, mon ami. I, just, I, just I think we lost because it all came down to dessert and frank slipped up christine and becky fuck yes you Jelly. have confirmed a place in the top three of master chef <laughs> well done routine there's a very daunting in fact the most horrific pressure test coming up for both of you. The pressure test is like Clash of the Titans. It's me and Frank, one-on-one. -on -one. When we say pressure test, it's unlike ever before. Me and Josh, right back in the kitchen. I'm ready to go into the pressure test. This is gonna be intense. Thank you, Hassan's $200,000 car loan for the five gifted subs. Welcome, ladies. Head up to the gallery. You are safe from this pressure test. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Josh, Frank, it's pressure test time. And that means that one of you is just one challenge away from leaving the MasterChef kitchen forever. Forever. This pressure test is all about the gorgeous yet oh so treacherous souffle. Bro, every season, dude, every stomach. season is this like, delicious. I mean, I get it. It's like one of the most difficult things to fucking whip up, but like every season, they're just gonna do souffle. It's just like, oh, White come on. Cheese souffle. Josh. Yes. How good are you at making a stunning souffle? I understand the techniques. I feel like I can put them together and make them work. Come on, Frank, dude. Now you're average African. You're posting like C-Mac right now. Mastering a cheese souffle is so difficult. The timing is everything. I expect this from C-Mac, not you. And it's about to get more difficult. What? Guys, I'm not in the mood for a cheese souffle today. Oh my gosh. At the same exact time as what? you bring Gordon his savory cheese souffle, I want. <laughs> oh my God, they're going to make two. That's bananas, dude. A raspberry souffle. What? Hmm. Okay, that's We're crazy. That's actually me. crazy. I want one of these. Three? Three Dark souffles? Oh, fuck that. Thank bro, God that's not me. Bro, okay. Last season, they literally made one fucking souffle. Okay. Last season, the big bomb was one souffle. They were like, let's triple that. That is fucked. That's disgusting. A pressure test? I don't know how they're going to make three different souffles in 60 minutes. One hour. You gotta remember, chat. The reason why this is so difficult is because making a souffle is really hard, regardless, and you're gonna fail like eight times. You know what I mean? On the dot into this challenge, both of you are gonna produce a stunning, savory cheese souffle and a beautiful, rich, delicious chocolate. 
souffle and a stunning How do I feel about my booster? Souffle, all at the same time. Honestly, guys, it's almost impossible. Why can't you guys all eat the same one? Oh, no. <laughs> that would be too easy. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm ready. I'll take it on. Both of you, please head to your stations. On your stations, you will find identical ingredients. We are giving you one hour and two ovens. You are giving us three perfect souffles. Got it? Got it. Got it. Your no. 60 minutes. It's not happening. Stops now. Very difficult. Whoever comes out on top of this one, in my mind, deserves to go straight through this final, let alone the top three, because it is so daunting. But the real zinger is this one savory and too sweet because you can't eat. Am I the I can't be the only one who still misses Tolly, right? Like I wanna I wanna know what the fuck Tolly would doing right now, would be doing right now in the three souffle challenge. He'd just be like, uh actually instead of a souffle, I decided to make drop shots, shot glasses with the with the egg batter. You know? Yeah, you're gonna drink raw egg juice that I made. Uh, and uh, if you don't appreciate it, it's because you don't understand the vision, fam. You know, it's so stupid. It's just, you're a stupid person for not getting it. can't even use the same base. Getting one of these up perfectly mm -hmm. is a challenge in itself. The secret to any good souffle is in the egg whites. If they're not done evenly and that egg white is not broken down, bang, you'll never get any form of ray. Josh certainly made some stunning desserts for us in the past. Frank, desserts aren't his strong point. Frank's not used to being in the pressure test. He's not used to that intensity. Josh now, you know, is so much more experienced mm -hmm. because he's been there four times. Yeah. So much of this, though, is also that technical know-how, you know? And what we're seeing right now, Frank actually writing the times down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got that money, math background, and this might be a place for him to have that shine through. Right. Tonight's game is all about the timing. So get all your bases made first. Between the chocolate and the cheese one, they've got to go in first. The raspberry's going to be a lot lighter. Yeah. Frank. Yes. Which one's going in first? The first one that's going to go in is the cheese souffle, because I know it's going to take longer mm -hmm. than the chocolate and then the raspberry. Josh. Yes, chef. How are you feeling? Feeling great, chef. You went home on a pressure test. Can you seriously beat him? I definitely can beat him. <laughs> How's your cheese souffle going to outsmart Frank's? I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use um, a little bit of nutmeg. And Normally, Frank is a better chef than Josh, but because this is like the souffle challenge, the triple souffle challenge, it could go either way. It's literally stroke of luck at that point. One fucking second too late, one second too early. You're fucked. You're done. Paprika to give it some flavor. I'm also going to use white cheddar. It feels so good to be upstairs in the balcony right now. Creating three souffles to come out at the exact same time is damn near impossible, and um, I feel for these guys. Right now, I'm just working from right to left, and I just need to get all my bases going, and then I can uh, start assembling the souffles and working on the meringues. The meringues uh, require a lot of attention, so it's imperative that I stay on top of it. I've had just as many good desserts as he has, so I don't really think I'm an underdog. Joe, what are you looking for from your raspberry souffle? I want it to be light, delicate, fragrant, like smelling a beautiful glass of red wine. For the chocolate souffle, what I want is something, you know, almost like eating a chocolate cloud, maybe a little bitter note from the cocoa. I want it just delicious and light. Mm -hmm. How about the cheddar? For my cheddar souffle, what I don't want to see is big lumps of egg white mm -hmm. anywhere. So that even distribution of those egg whites has to be almost beaten in. You've got to have the confidence that you, you want a see. souffle, not an omelet. Exactly that. Frank, how are we doing? Hey, chef. What are you putting in there? Putting a little bit of smoked paprika. I pray that that's the cheese. This is the cheese one, yeah. <laughs> it's Gina for real. Thank you for How the tank of the subs. It's rough. You worried? Hell yeah, I'm worried. Which one worries you the most, Josh? The cheese souffle. Gordon's souffle? Why? Because it's uh, very intricate with the fat and the cheese. Fat and the cheese, yes, yeah, tricky. Did he just hit that raw? Can you do that? Bro, for motherfuckers who cry about uh, raw food, he just literally... He, he just... It's not cheese, no. There's egg in there, no? I think these things should be going in the oven soon, right? Uh, raw eggs are fine, right? They're pasteurized, yes. aren't they? Just over 40 minutes gone, under 20 minutes to go. Come on. 
souffle said, gotta start hitting that oven. No one has one even in the oven yet. So, yeah. Josh. Even though they cry about raw shit all the time, that's why I'm saying, like, to the mix. That's a big risk. And if he's kind of weird that out of the box, if he's off the rails, then I'm worried about him. Frank seems to be going a more traditional route. I think that a traditional souffle will win this competition. And I think Frank has the edge. I think that Frank is playing it. Yeah, you think Frank has the edge because, you know, Italian solidarity, bro. Come on. White, a little too I got to pee again. Fuck. Josh, a little bit more intuitive, even though he's going out of the box with the raspberry. And if he can do that, it's his game. Guys, last 10 minutes to go. Josh, I haven't got any. He just put his cheese in. Now I'm scrambling like hell. I have seconds before it's too late to get my chocolate souffle in. And I see Frank. He's calmer than me, and I'm thinking, damn, this dude is really the ice man. Get them in the oven. Come on. There's Josh. He's putting Josh. his last two now. With nine minutes. They're going to be raw. Just put them in. I mean, I don't even know if there's enough time. There's no way in hell that's going to cook in eight and a half minutes. I could be going home. This is intense. No. I think for the first time in the history of MasterChef, we may have given them a challenge that's not doable. Two minutes to go. Come on. We may have given them a challenge that's not doable. It's all out of their hands now. It's in the oven. 90 seconds to go. Come on. I'm nervous as hell. The raspberries went in a little late. They're gonna have to hurry them cook. Don't worry about the raspberry, man. Cheese are rising, and the raspberry and the chocolate aren't really rising yet. Guys, a word of warning. When you grip those souffles, now is not the time to drop them. Last 60 seconds, guys. If they need more heat, crank up the oven. Josh's cheese souffles look a little better. You got this, you guys. Please have all three souffles on your tray, ready to serve. Ten if you wash the shell thoroughly, raw eggs are fine. You get salmonella from the bacteria that come from the chicken's cloaca. Mm, cloaca, you mean chussy? I know it's been a minute, but I waited to comment until you got back from pissing. Don't worry. And I responded thoroughly, okay? I responded in the worst way that I could. Ten, nine, Plussy. eight, seven, six, Five, speed up. Four, three, two, one. Serve. Let's go. Come on. I'm a disgusting person. From the beginning, I always knew that Josh and I were going to end up going head to head. Three souffles, 60 minutes. It's intense. Gently. This is it. It's me and Frank one on one. And this is a challenge I've been waiting for. I'm going to have to take Frank down today. Uh oh. The, the chocolate one was a little wobbly uh oh might be a little too much bro they <sighs> fucked this up <sighs> frank that's unacceptable brother what is this that's a i can see a classic one one situation coming right now you know my spoon and i look at it and it looks good to me but you know i'm sure there's things that are going through his mind that aren't going through mine So Gordon sticks his spoon in, and it looks good. It's hot, it's steamy, it's fluffy, and this is it. It's do or die. Josh's chocolate souffle looks amazing. However, it's gonna come down to flavor on that.
Oh no. Franks is underwhelming. He's underdone. It's sloppy. Joe's going into Josh's raspberry souffle right now. That's perfect. What the fuck? It's perfect, dude. It's over for Frank. It's literally fucking perfect. Frank and Josh, please come around to the front. Thank you. Okay. Bloody well done. That was tough, let me tell you. The Savy Souffle. Frank, what did you say? I thought you said Josh was going home earlier, you tall hater. Yeah, dude. I mean, look. Yeah, I have internalized tallophobia. It's the truth. Okay? But straight up. Like, Josh fucked this up. Right in the pussy. You season yours with? There's uh, Spanish paprika. <laughs> I'm using... Fuck this up in a positive way. <laughs> Ratio mixture. <coughs> no, I didn't do a mixture. I just did the white cheddar. Josh. Yes. Seasoning in yours. Not Megan there? Yes, it is. Joe, raspberry. Frank, you happy with yours? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to put some fresh uh, raspberries in, Uncle but Paul. I mean, I just didn't have the second to grab it. Josh, did you make any testers for your chocolate? No, I didn't. Prayed and hoped for the best. Exactly. Uh, we need some time. We got some serious things to do. How was the cheese souffle? They both were very good. Chocolate's really close. The uh, technique and just the aesthetics of it, I mean, it was restaurant quality. And I had a little bit more flavor to it. Yeah, it was like, it was just coming out of a three star kitchen. That's picture perfect. Gorgeous. Tough. <sighs> you both presented three stunning souffles, and you both are so desperate to get into that. Frank is a better chef. I told you that the souffle challenge can go either way because of, you know, luck for the most part it's very difficult to put together and for that josh fucking popped off and he got lucky even though frank is a better chef than josh in my opinion and i think frank is going home today final three sadly only one of you can make it josh you had a delicious seasoning going on nutmeg actually worked it was crisp on top and smooth pretty good frank yours had that rich sumptuousness and again, seasoned beautifully. Paprika, yeah, it worked. Bold move. The best cheese souffle. Congratulations. Frank. I'm one souffle away from being in the top three. Yeah, it's going to be a classic 1-1, one, one, but the raspberry one, Josh fucked it up. So, it, you know, in a positive way, I mean. Josh whipped it up. Okay, he fucking altered on the raspberry one. Classic 1-1 one, one incoming. Josh takes it. Trophy, it already has my name on. So the raspberry... Bro, stop saying fucked it up positively. I don't know how to... Dis I don't know why I keep saying it. I can't stop myself. Souffles, they were both excellent, had their own merits. Josh's was aesthetically beautiful, extremely light, extremely fragrant. Frank's, on the other hand, a little bit denser, but more extracted more of the real raspberry Oh, that's why flavor. they went to the raspberry first, because it was the obvious that Josh's was better. The was technically kind of perfect. And that souffle belonged to Josh. Wow. That's one, one. I'm sorry, Graham, to put you in this situation, but it's all down. Oh my God. Please. I hate being in the spot. Oh my God. Graham took off the Reddit Atheist Sevens, bro. Shit's about to pop off. You think? He hates being in the spot. He hates being the one to one guy. He took the glasses off, dude, for a second. The belief in God came back into him, okay? He took the glasses off. All of a sudden, he's like, you know, it should do in illallah. That's what he was saying. 
Frank's, yours was very rich. Josh, on the other hand, yours was lighter. The flavor in both were very equal. But at the end of the day, one person's stood out amongst them. The person with the best chocolate souffle and going through to the top three of MasterChef is... Bro, come on, bro. Come on, just say it. Fucking say it. Oh! Oh! I'm not gonna run an ad break right now because it's only in the middle of the hour, but god damn, these guys are fucking demons, dude. Notice how many ad breaks they run, by the way? So remember, just one 60-second ad break at the top of the hour. Chill. That's one, one. I'm sorry, Graham, to put you in this situation, but it's all down to the chocolate souffle. Ugh. I hate being in this spot. The person with the best chocolate souffle. There's a quarter million dollars waiting for me. There's a cookbook deal waiting for me. I'm ready to rock and roll. It's time to send Josh home. Going through to the top three oh, no. of MasterChef. I really came in this competition to win, to be that master chef. It's only gonna be one man in the final three, and it's gonna be me. That person is. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Josh. This is a real bummer, Jeff, dude. I think Frank was job, probably. Frank. Did it, man. I think Frank was like up there with Christine's level of chefing. Like, it sucks that it's the souffle because it's the fucking worst way to go out. Good job, man. Whew. Damn, this man, was I'm... racially motivated, by the way. They, they gunned down an Italian man in the streets like this. Pulled it, it off. Up. I can't believe I pulled it off. It's crazy. Frank and I, we had our battles. He's a great cook, and I wish him well. Josh, congratulations. Please join the ladies upstairs in the top three of MasterChef. Well done. Thank you, guys. Take yourself up Good there. Job, Frank. Let's throw some Italian hands in the chat for our boy Frank. <laughs> he was a legend. Frank, let me tell you something. There's no stockbroker anywhere in the world that holds that level of passion that you have with food. Take everything you've learned and continue the journey because you're going places. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. I know what it takes to cut it in the food business in New York. I know who fakers are and who the real deal are. And Frank, my friend, you're the real deal. You could do this. You have the overall disposition to really be a food entrepreneur. Get out there and make some money selling food. I appreciate it, Joe. Come here. This has been an unbelievable opportunity. Mac Thank you, Saw. Thank you for the tank. Get the sub. Well, well, appreciate well. it, man. Man. Food man. entrepreneur with man. disrespect, dude. Good All right, man. Now. Loremaster says, Frank Miranda was a stockbroker from Holbrook, New York. He was eliminated in MasterChef Season 3, Episode 18 after losing a souffle challenge when only his cheese souffle impressed the judges. After MasterChef, Frank returned to a career in wealth management but still has an interest in cooking. They fucking burned him, dude. They literally fucking burned his passion. This man could have been happier. I'm telling you right now, if Frank did not get eliminated here, he would have had a shot at the title, okay? He would have had a fucking shot at the title. He 100% could have become, like, an excellent chef. And instead, he's just, like, a fucking wealth manager Andy, dude. That's so sad. One, two, three. Who's gonna win MasterChef? Becky is gonna win MasterChef. I'm gonna be buying her cookbook, no problem. Take, Take care, care, guys. Thank you, Frank. I'm disappointed that I lost. My arch nemesis, Josh, gets me in the end. Frank, man. Love you, Frank. It was an honor. Frank. Bye, guys. I'm extremely proud that I got this far. MasterChef is definitely a culinary boot camp. Go blue! Go! I've shown that I have the ability to take charge and lead people. Yes, we did, chef! I've learned so much from these judges. This is an Indian fried catfish. This is really good. Thank you. 
This is definitely a life-changing experience. The best dish tonight was yours, Frank. Yes. <laughs> great flair. Dude, Tremendous. not only was he great at chefing, okay? Not only was he great at chefing, but he straight up, like, was a good person. He, he was, I might say, the best stockbroker I've ever met. You know what I mean? Like, crazy to me that, you know, just an Italian boy from Holbrook, New York, could win the hearts and minds of so many people. The skill, Frank. Good job. It's just a matter of time when I get into this business. You can bet your ass you're going to be coming to my restaurant. Don't you have stockbroker friends? Okay, shut up. I, I'm, I'm exaggerating.